let's get let's get rolling. All right. So, on today's agenda, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everyone. Um, today's agenda, we have the usual Hackfest planning. And I'd like to do a, a bit of a retrospective on the LA Hackfest um, to see what people thought. And, um, and, and, and we can use that to sort of have a discussion around maybe the cadence that we have for these events and so forth. Um, um, uh, Todd has got uh, an update on the internship program. We actually have uh, received a number. We actually received more proposals than we had spots, which is a good thing. And uh, I think they've narrowed down the, the final set. So we'll review that briefly. And then um, Dave is going to ask us to uh, approve publishing the Sawtooth Security Report. Um, I think there was just one change that needed to be done, but Dave can update us on that. Then we have uh, two updates, one from a, a working group, the architecture working group. That's the first of the work group updates that will be uh, entertaining. And then the, so Ram will, will give us that one. And then uh, we have the indie update, hopefully. Uh, any other items for the agenda? Actually, I did have one. I'll have to think of it. Um, Yeah. Uh, anyway, so let's let's get moving then with the uh, the hackfest. Um, so, I'd like to start by just sort of getting people's impressions of the LA hackfest. If you were attending, um, if you didn't attend and you want to share maybe why you didn't or couldn't, um, you know, was it a conflict? Was it I hate LA or you know what <laughs> whatever it might have been? Um, I think that would be um, maybe a little bit useful, but. You know, our, you know, I think, you know, the, 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 the so, so let me just sort of give my own personal perspective here. I thought that day zero was actually pretty good. Um, it could have been better. Um, uh, you know, the attendance was fairly good. Um, and, uh, uh, but we didn't have somebody from every one of the projects. And so that was a little disappointing. Um, <clears throat> because some of the projects we didn't get to sort of provide a, a one-on-one for. Um, and, um, and then, but then day two, there was a few f less people, I think some of the noobs that were probably, you know, maybe from the university or, or what have you, uh, decided to attend class instead. And then, um, uh, and I think that the, the high school kids that we had in attendance, they didn't show up for day two or day three, if I'm not mistaken. And, um, uh, and then day three was actually even less well attended, which again, fairly disappointing. I know some people had to run off. I know Brian had to run off. Mick had to run off. They all had previous engagements. Um, but, um, uh, you know, again, it, it wasn't as good as I might have hoped, to be honest. I was actually hoping that we'd have a few more people enga engaged enough after the day zero that they could participate, um, at least from a auditing perspective, some of the conversations we were having deeper going into, you know, integrating Indie and Sawtooth and Fabric and Burrow and so forth. Um, so uh, I, I, I don't know what others thought, um, but that, you know, that's my, that's my sort of, uh, my feedback on, on uh, last week's uh, event. Um, uh, Again, I, I'm not sure that I can, I'm not sure I understand why it was so poorly attended. So, hi, this is Arno, if I may add. Um, so I wasn't at D0, but I was at D1 and 2, and I share the feeling. It seems to have fairly low attendance and low energy overall. Not to say that there weren't any useful you know, and interesting discussions here and there. But overall, it seems like fairly low energy. But the, the, my question, you know, it's like, what I find more interesting to ask is, you know, is that a one-off? It just happened that, you know, the circumstances were such that we had very few people showing up? Or is it because there is like too many of those meetings and people are getting tired of them and then we're just starting on a trend like this? That would be my concern. 
Thanks, Arno. Anyone else? Yeah, I had um, similar, but but in some ways different perspectives. Um, so I'll come at it from a different direction. What we set out to do was was have that day zero be uh, uh, sort of getting people started who are unfamiliar with the projects, and then intend that days two and three be uh, in some ways deeper, whether it's project to project collaboration or we're trying to take the, the new people into um, deeper content. And it kind of felt like for the people that, that were interested in hanging around through all three days that were new to Hyperledger, the, the day zero content kind of has to stretch through all of those days. And so the notion that we could just do the intro material on day one and then proceed to other things kind of ignores the fact that uh, people will still be in that novice phase for you know probably a while when they first get involved in the projects. Um, now on the other hand I, I think that we did have some good discussions on on day two and day three that were more in that that interproject collaboration with the people that are you know, long-term hyperledger contributors so I felt like that was productive, um, but definitely by by day three afternoon it was it was a skeletal crew. Um, so yeah, day three I'm, after about one o'clock, it, <laughs> it was a bit of a ghost town actually. Uh, yeah, yeah, I would be in favor of of keeping these to maybe two day events and and trying to stay focused. Uh, try to try to get everybody's commitment to be there solidly through through two days yeah. instead of kind of two and a half days. <clears throat> but if we're going to do that, it seems to me that we need to choose, is this going to be a road show where we try and get local people in, you know, uh, up to speed on what Hyperledger is all about, how, you know, it's an umbrella project, understanding, you know, what the various projects are all about, and then spending the other day diving a little bit deeper, but again, it's just a, a road show, right? Versus, uh, again, the thing that seems to me to be always um, uh, at the expense of helping to get new people on board is any kind of cross-project, uh, you know, discussions. Um, uh, or, or, you know, having, you know, uh, a project able to sort of get to uh, discussions around proposals for new features and so forth. Um, uh, that seems to me to be, uh, we, we aren't giving ourselves enough opportunity for that, I think. And then everybody goes back home and then they focus on their own thing. And, you know, that, that's, um, you know, for me, that that is one of the areas that I think we need the most improvement on. Is how do we get these projects to work a little bit more collaboratively? How do we get people to, <clears throat> you know, start looking a little bit more closely at what else is, is around? You know, what other capabilities there are in Sawtooth or Burrow or, or what have you, and how they may relate or apply and how they might be integrated into... Uh, or, you know, replace features of another project. So that, that you know, because I think at the end of the day, that's really what this whole thing is, is supposed to be about. And we're just not giving ourselves an opportunity to really do that effectively. So I would um, second that, Chris. In fact, I mean, one of the things Ram and I were talking about the, the architecture working group report last night and um, the you know, the, the phone meetings of, you know, every other week, it's hard to make progress on the papers, but we sit down um, at the Hackfest um, for four or five hours and we were able to crank out you know, almost all of the road, the uh, smart contracts work and a big chunk of the identity work. Mm -hmm. um, we were able to put together a substantial portion of the crypto library proposal. I mean, it, it, in a sense, I would go the other extreme from what Dan was saying, which is make smaller numbers of meetings and make them longer. Um, uh, if I can invest in the travel time to get down there, generally, I'd rather hang around and just get the work done um, and cut yeah. down the total number of meetings. Yeah, I, yeah I, so I would, 
Uh, uh, yeah, so just to add on to that, you know, I thought this meeting, even though it, yeah, from a general perspective, uh, uh, this is Ram, um, uh, you know, attendance seemed to be low. From the architecture work group meetings, it was very productive because <laughs> we had uh, uh, a core set of people who were physically there and we could just bang, uh, uh, bang stuff out uh, in one solid session, um, which worked out pretty well. So. Uh, we just, uh, and I think uh, is maybe a little bit more structure around what we intend to accomplish uh, and uh, have that communicated up front would kind of help in, uh, in making it more a productive working session um, uh, in addition to the roadshow aspect. Yeah. No, I, I, I'm not saying that there wasn't good i mean i had some great conversations and i think mick just as you're describing you know you know we had i think you know you me and gary had a great conversation we had um uh you know from a fabric perspective we got people together that aren't always together and we had some i think some really good conversations um uh, got to focus a little bit more on the borough and fabric integration uh, work that's ongoing and and thinking through you know some of those issues it was it was good face time to really dive a little bit deeper on you know and and again that's that's just me that's just the conversations i had and i know others had uh similarly deep conversations we, you know day zero was was good and there was a little bit follow up as as dan described but th there it, it, again it just wasn't as well attended by the regulars um, and I think we suffer a little bit because of that. So, um, uh, and, and, you know, I think if we're going to do a roadshow, we don't necessarily need everybody there. We just need to have somebody from each project there maybe to, uh, and, and, and somebody to help, uh, for each of those projects so that we can spend that time with noobs. Um, and then, so maybe these are really different things that we have a face to face of the hyperledger effort. And we have Noob Day in various cities. I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm struggling because I, I, yeah. I tend to think that we're starting to lose a little bit of energy here. And I'm concerned about that. Yeah, Chris. I, I, think, I think the... <clears throat> go ahead, Rob. I was just Rob, uh, saying that that's a great idea uh, not to have the working sessions. Uh, choosing locations which are friendly for the core attendees we want to be there and having working sessions probably works better than spreading them around the world uh, where we have to travel. Um, so maybe we, uh, maybe it helps to have them um, co-located uh, occasionally, but on a regular basis, maybe we should, if we are targeting um, real work getting done and active working sessions, we should make that the focus of the face-to-face -face meetings. Yeah, so I agree with you, Ram. Um, and I think, Chris, your idea of splitting kind of uh, hack fests and roadshows is a great idea. Um, you know, I think maybe if we have a handful of hack fests in locations where we have lots of developers and we know people will show up and we can get a lot of work done, uh, and we, we may want to consider splitting those off uh, from our evangelism efforts, because fundamentally what we've been trying to do with the Hackfest is two things. We've been trying to bring new people on board and sort of show them the ropes. And we've also been trying to, you know, get work done, do project integration, uh, things like that. And these two goals are, are you know, pretty orthogonal. Um, yeah. So, so you're, you're right. It might be best to, to split things off and have, you know, core meetings where, you know, everyone can show up, everyone can get things done and then have, you know, uh, road tours where people can do more evangelism. As long as the core meetings don't all end up happening just in the United States, you know, as long as they also reflect the same geographic diversity of, um, not just the existing TSC members, but but um, the developers that we know are out there, um, which to me still says rotating between um, you know North America, Europe, and Asia uh, on a, a pretty frequent basis. I mean, uh, it should reflect the the diversity of develop you know, de developers that we want 
Um, otherwise, people will feel like they have to travel to the U.S. to to work to become a a maintainer on on Hyperledger, and that would be an unfortunate impression. So, Brian, I think we discussed this, and we were thinking if we did something like a rotation of like four of these hack fests a year, and we did like uh, you know Shanghai, Hong Kong, Beijing, Tokyo, one of those, then San Francisco, then New York, and then like London or Amsterdam, we would cover kind of the geographic diversities. I think that makes sense. So we're basically saying no, no more day zeros because that's closer to what the, the two day hack fest I think were meant to be and then four rather than six per year. Well, yeah, except that I do think then that maybe we work with Greg and Dan and yourself and um, you know, the speakers bureau, if you will, and get a, uh, a road show kind of a thing mm -hmm. uh, that would not conflict obviously with the, you know. Yeah, well, and I think what we could do is better connect the speakers bureau that's developing with the meetup community um, yeah. uh, and, and do things like organize a tour. If somebody wants to put together a string of meetup appearances uh, in, uh, in India, for example, you know, uh, if I could talk Hart into going out, if he's interested or wants a, um, a, a junket through India, for example, um, we could easily figure out some way uh, to have a, you know, reach out to the Indian meetup community and have him show up at a string of meetups over the course of a week or 10 days or something. Um, I mean, at, at maturity, right? It would look like that. There's a lot of work to do between here and there, but, um, but that would be great. And probably even, you know, less resource intensive than, than a, than a roadshow kind of concept. But, um, uh, and, and in essence, Tracy does some of this now. Um, and I anticipate other community architects as we hire them, will do some of this outreach and training, but the more the merrier and the more that of you that we can involve in that, that would be great. So, yeah. Like yeah, I, I like the idea of kind of cutting the, the marketing stuff out of the, the hack fests, at least for one or two hack fests, see how that goes. Um, I know that the part that I found most valuable out of LA was um, time spent with uh, Sean and Nate and Hart and, and, and so forth going through um, the, the crypto proposal and uh, what we could do uh, at the... Um, consensus layers between a couple of the projects there. And that was really productive. Um, definitely more so than, than uh, uh, some of the, the day zero stuff. Yeah. And of course, I, I was not there because of the holidays. Uh, sorry about that. And uh, personally, I think uh, the uh, the 3D hack fest may, might be a little bit uh, too long. I guess a uh, 2D one it should be better and uh, more efficient. I always well, <laughs> but well, I I always feel that two days is never enough. Um, but, yeah, but. But based on the feedback on these uh, LA head effects, uh, you know, the yeah. day zero attracts most of the people. Yeah. While the day two, actually, there are a few of the people. Right. And then, you know, again, if I'm going to go to China, I'm not going for two days. Right. I, I did Singapore for two days, and oh my God, I nearly killed myself. Um, I, I understand. <laughs> um, yeah. And, and I. But. Uh, yeah, I, I understand, and you're coming from the other direction, but, um, um, uh, you know, I think if we're going to, for instance, if we were going to be able to give ourselves an opportunity, for instance, for us to have work group meetings like architecture and um, identity and um, uh, white paper and so forth, and give people also an opportunity to participate where maybe they don't always have that opportunity, um, then you need more time and uh, less tracks, right? Um, you know, obviously we can, you know, you, you'd still have um, discussions, cross project and so forth, but I would think that, you know, one of the things that we sort of cut out was the work group meetings because then we couldn't do anything else because everybody wanted to be in a working group meeting, but we only had two days and so we're squeezing in things um, uh, and, and as a result, I think we lost 
participation of people that are primarily participating in working groups and, and um, uh, because now they didn't have an opportunity to, um, you know, to really get together. So uh, I, um, you, you know, my, 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 my thought was maybe we have, you know, uh, working group day and, you know, everybody gets a couple of hours um, kind of a thing. Um, try not to have too much overlap and then, um, you know, maybe two days for the other kinds of conversations. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm just, hey, I'm just trying to throw this out. Yes. One, one, so, so we've, we've typically run these as very much an unconference where we yeah. let you know, that be very organic and maybe some of the feedback is um, that if we were a little more directive or structured in how we run the two days, um, that might help motivate people to come. Uh, and help people feel like the time that they spent there was focused and well spent. Yeah. Uh, so maybe a bit of the message is, you know, spending more time on these calls or on the, on the TSC mailing list, reiterating the need for, you know, uh, developing a, a structured schedule. It, it can still be organic, but, but more, more ahead of time rather than just the day you show up like we've, we've tended to. Yeah. Um, and then second, um, we could divide those two days between on the first day, focusing on cross-project kinds of things. So getting, you know, conversations like, you know, between, that happened between Sawtooth and Indy, for example, or um, uh, the working groups. So let's talk about architecture as it spans across these projects. And, and I'm really hoping we have a lot of overlap between the people working in the working groups and people working on code, because one's supposed to be the way that we get matrixed, <laughs> um, you know, interaction between yes. the other. And then the second day can be, you know, as a, as a, as a fabric team, as an indie team, um, you know, heads down ha hacking, you know, and back and forth and, and or, or, yeah, going off. through new proposals. And yeah, I think, I think it's important to try to stick to the IETF kind of model of saying, you know, let's make sure that the face to face meetings are, are about uh, uh, making progress on things and having high bandwidth conversations that might otherwise happen on the list, yeah. but uh, making sure that it's not where the decisions are made that exclude the people who couldn't uh, travel to those meetings. Fair enough. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Well, we've spent 25 minutes on this and um, I, you know, we do have other things to, to discuss. I, I, I think, you know, and maybe we should have, you know, follow on discussion after people have given it a little bit of thought and maybe have some ideas. Brian, I, I think I like the idea of having a project day where, you know, the sawtooth crowd and the fabric crowd and the burrow crowd can all get together and, and do their thing. And then another day that's focused on the more cross project kind of stuff, whether it's working groups or otherwise. Um, I, I think that's, I think that's good. And then um, so anyway, so let's, let's, let's pick that up. I don't, Todd, did you have any other, uh, I know one of the things I had asked Todd was maybe we should have a poll on who's thinking of going to Dubai. Um, just, you know, my own yeah. private uh, poll suggested that wasn't going to be very well attended. Yep. Yeah, that might be a good idea. I, I don't foresee being able to make that myself. I can't. Maybe you can do that on the channel in parallel. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I mean, my sense from talking with other folks on day three uh, in LA was that it was going to be a challenge to get out there. Um, yeah, and I see <laughs> quite a few more of the, the more seasoned folks saying the same thing. Yeah. Um, and then with Arno's uh, separate comment previously, just about the European Labor Day, I believe it was, makes it a bit challenging as well. Yes. So my sense is that we should probably not move forward with Dubai. And then if we're doing quarterly, then June, you know, that's Q2. So I think the question then becomes, you know, and we can discuss this over the mailing list or next week, but do we look at doing Asia in the, the roughly April timeframe, mid April, something like that, and then move to Europe and then North America towards the end of the year. So, but I, we can, 
Yeah, yeah we can we can move we, that. We can take that to the discussion. Um, although, again, I've said April is out for me. I can't travel. So. Okay. Unless everyone wants to come here, that's always possible. <laughs> do a hack fest in Florida. <laughs> yeah, we should probably move on on the agenda to keep pace here. Yeah. All right. So, uh, um, mentor program or inter internship program, I should say. Yep. So uh, thank you everyone that submitted to that. Uh, we have 12 slots for uh, mentors and interns. We received 18 proposals. Um, so it's actually a pretty straightforward process for selection this time. Um, uh, three, of the, three of the proposals we received uh, were really focused on companies' proprietary products as opposed to actually working on the Hyperledger technology. Uh, so we deprioritized those. That left us with 15 proposals. Uh, of those, uh, three folks had requested two interns each. Uh, so we thought um, we'd offer each of them one. Uh, and so then that brings us down to 12. The other remaining nine proposals were, were excellent projects uh, for interns to work on. So what the list looks like um, is basically as follows. Uh, it went out with the agenda as well. So the first nine uh, met the bar of what we're looking for. Uh, the three following that, uh, the three uh, folks that proposed to be mentors, um, we'll, we'll let them select one of the two projects that they put in there, uh, or in some of those cases, they may be able to merge that into one uh, single intern project. And then, like I said, there were several that were just focused on more product as opposed to Hyperledger technology. Um, so from our view, this was pretty straightforward this time. Um, no major red flags um, and just wanted to check with this group and uh, call for any objections to moving forward with these as the mentors and uh, opening the application project uh, process for students. Uh, personally, I think it's a great list. I agree. Looks good. Yeah, thanks, Todd. Cool. Sounds good. We will get this posted uh, and then process and set up. Thank you all. Okay. All right, Dave. Who's B, are you on? Yep, can you guys hear me? Can. Yeah, great. So um, as part of the Sawtooth 1.0, um, we went through the same checklist as we did for Fabric 1.0, and that included a security audit um, executed by Netitude. Now they were at the Hackfest in LA to report out and answer questions, um, and they have, they have prepared a um, technical report from the audit and I would like to publish it along with the blog post um, like we did with the Fabric one. So um, I have sent this out to a few of the TSC members who've requested it, um, received some feedback. I think the only change we've requested is that the report reflect the current status of the, the findings, you know, the, the issues that were found. Um, all of the medium and high ones were addressed before 1.0. The other ones are being addressed either um, as part of architectural changes or they've been deemed like non, you know, non critical uh, issues that could be fixed, maybe even good first bugs actually. So, um, so yeah, I'm just asking the TSC for a quick vote on approval of the, of the publishing of the report. And there were, uh, I think there were two reports that you sent me. One was like a business report and the other was a technical report and it's just the business or just the technical one that, that would be sent out. Uh, actually, I think we published both of them for Fabric as well. Why? Was there something with the management report? Uh, that one was just in present tense. So uh, yeah, for example, no. you can get the private key off of a sawtooth node. Okay. Uh, is kind of how that's phrased. So. Just, sure. just the same comment as the other thing. So it's in the context of, yeah, you know, this right. was in an <clears throat> audit ahead of a one O. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so the plan I w uh, was to publish this with a blog post to give it context. And then mm -hmm. when I put it into our wiki, I can make notes in the wiki saying that the, you know, these were produced on this date. So things have changed since then, you know, um, and yeah, that's maybe fine. call out specifics like, you know, all of the issues have been fixed, that kind of thing. So yeah. um, rather than go back to Netitude and have them rewrite it, I'd rather do it that way. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So Todd, right. you want to run a call? Uh, a... 
Yeah, we can oh. just do j yeah. we can just do a quick vote. Uh, so from the TS TSC members, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any abstaining? Any opposed? All right, that passes unanimously. Thank you. All right. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Thank you, Dave. Dave. Um, so okay. it'll probably go out in the next week or so. I, I have to work into Jessica's um, blog uh, schedule. So I'll uh, send a note out to the TSC once we know where to, where to land or when it'll land. Okay. Architecture Working Group, Ram, you're up. All right, thank you. Um, so um, uh, put out the, um, the um, update on the wiki. Um, I don't know if you guys uh, got a chance to pull it up, but can you pull it up, Todd? The link. Yeah, yeah, I just dropped it into the uh, TSC chat. Okay, awesome. Um, so, uh, quick uh, overall uh, update on the health of the group. Uh, we've been making steady but slow progress on several work items. Uh, we are very close to uh, finishing up the second in a series of papers. Just a quick reminder uh, we released uh, the first uh, article on the architecture, the consensus paper back in August. The second one that we are working on and almost done on us uh, focused on the smart contract layer, if you will, and that should be released soon. Um, we have uh, the regular track, which is now um, working on the identity services uh, functions, if you will, and uh, that's uh, going well. We made after languishing for uh, for quite a while we made significant progress on it on the face-to-face -face in LA uh, and we, so we're doing good progress on that and uh, Mick has been driving the privacy and confidentiality track that got started uh, late last year um, and uh, that's been going well as well uh, overall participation has been kind of steady 8 to 12 uh, participants show up for our telecon biweekly teleconference meetings for these two tracks. The main track focused on uh, the main architecture work, and the second one being on privacy and confidentiality. Uh, so right now they alternate uh, um, meetings. Um, no um, major issues, I would say. Uh, the main concern for me is that uh, progress tends to be uh slower than what we'd like uh because it's uh seems most of the uh you know uh, uh, getting work done outside of the meetings and the working sessions uh is based on how much time people can dedicate to contributing to it so um that's been a bit of a challenge so need to more uh, to encourage more active contribution and widen the net as well um, we have the core group of participants. Uh, we've lost, lost some of the active participation uh, over time. Um, some new folks have joined, which is great, but we'd like to, uh, you know, maybe get some of your help in recruiting more uh, active contributors from your respective companies and projects. Um, so I think I've had a conversation with uh, Chris and Arno saying, hey, you know, it would be great uh, if there's more active uh, participation uh, from IBM and Fabric. And um, uh, of course, other projects uh, like Iroha, we don't get participation at all. Uh, and uh, uh, the you know time zones probably don't help, uh, but uh, that's been a challenge. Any thoughts, questions on that? Yeah, that, that's interesting to hear, um, uh, particularly that note on Roja, it seems that they've been having difficulty contributing with the, uh, participating with the rest of the, the broader Hyperledger community. A uh, little off topic from your report, so we don't need to delve into that, but it'd be nice if uh, there's something that we can do to get them more engaged. Uh, yeah. Generally from from your, your work group's participation, uh, Brian had made a, a comment earlier about uh, sort of taking note of the the contributors who are are people on uh, contributing code as well as people who are contributing to the design thinking like this. How would you characterize the the mix of your participants from from the active ones? Uh, I would say we've traditionally have uh, had 
the architects from the different projects participating. Um, so I, I would assume that they have uh, um, a good uh, good view on what's going on um, in, in the projects and that they are uh, involved in the code as well. Uh, but uh, you know, it'll be great if we can get uh, the active um, folks who are doing the active design in the projects more involved uh, than they are now. Uh, and I guess I'm, it's a matter of bandwidth as well, but that would be nice. Okay, thanks. Um, going on, uh, uh, the, uh, you know, like I said, we have uh, bi-weekly calls. We capture all the information. Uh, most of the work happens on these teleconferences and we do have working sessions that are, we put together. Um, the last few face to faces, I guess uh, the thought was uh, to focus on both uh, more of the coding stuff. So we didn't have the session. Uh, this LA face to face, uh, you know, we, uh, we had the work group meetings and that worked out very well. It was very productive. Um, so, we need. Uh, I like the discussion that we were having having earlier to kind of uh, um, um, splitting this out so that we can focus on having some dedicated time for uh, the cross project discussions and uh, time carved out for the working group activities. I think um, having a little bit of structure around what we expect to get done during these working sessions uh, kind of helps and making sure that we that those are quite productive so um, you know uh, so you know given that we those sessions are more productive maybe um, outside of the full face to face meetings uh, we need to explore whether there are opportunities for um, working sessions whether they are virtual or uh, face to face uh, outside of even those to get more work done so that's something that uh, we, I'd like to explore uh, planned uh, work products, uh, smart contract paper, hopefully a matter of a few weeks. Uh, we're making good pro progress on the other two, uh, two work items, identity services and privacy and confidentiality, and those will be in the pipeline. That's about it. Uh, anyone else from the architecture work group? Mick, uh, Hart, uh, Nathan, you want to add anything to this? I, I can, uh, hey, Ram, this is Ben, ben yeah. from, from participation, yeah. um, especially from Iroha team. Uh, I, I assume in that, you know, most folks from Iroha team is from, from uh, Japan or somewhere in, in Asia. And our meeting is at noon uh, Eastern time. So I'm also struggle with at noon Eastern time as well. So perhaps we, we could move it earlier. I, I know you're in California, so it's much harder <laughs> as well. So I'm not sure how we can accommodate their time zone, but at noon Eastern time means that it's either uh, you know, midnight their time or 1 a.m. their time, so it's very difficult. Yes, maybe we, uh, we can reach out to them and see whether there's a time slot that will encourage their participation, but uh, yeah. it'll be good to kind of... Uh, uh, you know, and if it does, uh, I'm ready to move it. Yeah. So, <clears throat> I mean, basically, I, <clears throat> th there's no good time. <laughs> if you're going to, you know, basically span the globe in terms of participation, there is just no good time. The, the, the least objectionable time for the most, if you will, typically tends to be around 9 a.m. Eastern. 10 a.m. is a little bit, you know, late, but... Um, what I've done in the past, again, if I have, especially if I have a heavy contingent in Asia that want to participate is to uh, rotate the time slot. So for instance, in the XML protocol working group, we had, you know, people around the globe that wanted to participate and we ended up, you know, uh, uh, doing, uh, you know, different times of the day to accommodate the Europeans, the Asians, the, you know, the, the uh, US um, time zones. Um, and, uh, you know, everybody pays a price, right? So, you know, if, 
if you're targeting, you know, Europe, then everybody in the East Coast of the United States has to get, and the West Coast has to get up, you know, before dawn. Um, and then if you're, uh, but then everybody else can can dial in at a reasonable time. And then, um, you know, having it later in the day disadvantages typically the Asians. Um, so, I don't know, just a thought, maybe rotate the time uh, and everybody pays a price. Uh, and then that way there's nobody that's advantage or disadvantage. Everybody's equally disadvantaged. <laughs> it's a good suggestion. Maybe we'll, we'll try at least one meeting and actively solicit participation from. Yeah. And then, and you, don't get it, that you know, go back to what you're doing if it's working, but that's, that's one way of, of trying it out. Yeah. I like the idea of experimenting. All right, thanks, Ram. Any other questions for Ram? Okay. Yeah. Not, 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 a, not a question, but this is um, John from Talos. Just to, to reinforce what Brian was saying a second ago, um, yeah, we, we run teams. I, I have uh, engineering and research teams uh, in, in all three major continents, and there is no better answer than simply rotating the calls. If you have them, Occasionally, you have to have them a little bit more frequently than you'd like uh, in order to avoid long-running mistakes or disagreements or whatever. But if you just alternate the time zone to be kind of awkward all the time for Europe, but okay for, for the US and, and Asia, uh, that's, that's the best we've ever managed in 20 years of trying to coordinate this kind of thing. I don't think there's any other option. And then just keep good notes so that the guys who miss it can keep up. Thanks. Okay, any other questions thank for you. Ram? If not, thanks, Ram. And we'll move on to Indy. And is Nate, who, who's doing the Indy? Thanks, Chris. This is Sean Bowen from the Indy team. Uh, thanks, TSC, for having me. Um, I've just yep. posted the Indy update for February 2018 in the, for the Q1 2018 in the chat, if anyone wants to look at it. Um, I'm not going to read the whole thing. No one wants to listen to my voice that long, but um, so. That's not true, that's not true. Yes, well, I have a face for radio. Thank you for saying that. Um, Project Health, uh, for Hyperledger Indy, we are now 11 months in uh, since our acceptance. Our anniversary is March 30th of 2018. We continue to gain more interest in developer support. Um, our mailing list now has a lot more uh, regular traffic and activity in all channels uh, from commits, chat, mailing lists, et cetera. Um, we have not completed all the incubation tasks needed, but stability is improving as the team pushes towards general availability. Um, in, in Q1 2018, we've had a number of community members get more involved with updating and contributing to the documentation, as well as improving the developer experience. And we've also seen developer contributions in progress for a Node.js wrapper for Indie SDK, which we're super excited about, as well as a community contribution for wallets and DID auth um, thanks to a bounty program from the government of British Columbia. Um, so we are very excited about um, contributors, both in code as well as just interest, as well as documentation, and that group is growing. Um, so as I mentioned before, we are continuing to work on uh, improving documentation. We have started an Indie Improvement Initiative process uh, in the India RFC repository to capture and document architecture and design resources. We have moved architecture discussions into our mailing list and we're really trying to focus rocket chat on uh, Q and a discussions. Hey, how does this work? Where can I find X? We're, we're, we're trying to not necessarily split the communication, but really prioritize the deeper threaded discussions in the mailing list. Um, many issues with view change and catch up were made um, in the last few months. Sorry for the coconuts, the, somebody slacking me while I'm on this call, I apologize. Um, there is more effort required to improve usability and verifiable claims, exchange use cases, as well as the gaps in the indie agent. Uh, we're also very focused on getting back um, on track in regards to the incubation tasks that we are slightly behind on. Um, and we're working on that pretty diligently. Overall, in the last quarter, um, we've moved the build process completely over to Hyperledger Jenkins. We've got unit testing and artifact testing improvements. Our documentation has gotten better, as I mentioned a couple times now. From an Indie node perspective, node-to-node -node message validation has been completed. We are working on multiple bug fixes and refactoring uh, within the code base itself. Upgrades to the Sovereign Test Network and Sovereign Live. Actually, for folks who don't know, Sovereign is one of the initial instantiations of Indie. So we were able to see things in the 
you know, we were able to make changes in the code base based on things that we're seeing from a performance or a scale perspective on the sovereign side, feeding that in really quickly. And we're working on DID and verifiable claims improvements from an indie SDK perspective. Um, we've been working on SDK wrappers for .NET. I just mentioned a community contribution for uh, Node.js. A non-creds protocol enhancements have happened, um, as well as a new indie SDK-based CLI and a new getting started guide. Uh, current plans. So as of February of 2017, we've revised the product roadmap um, for Indie Node and Indie SDK. We've begun, we've actually continued discussions since uh, Portugal last year on the, um, on the uh, shared crypto library, and that work is continuing. Um, we've implemented major stability updates and distributed key management is a key focus for Q1, as well as for all of Indy, as well as um, revocation, which is a key focus for both Indy SDK as well as Indy Node, the ledger itself. Um, from Indy Node perspective, we're working on stability, performance, and revocation, DID, and verifiable claims. From SDK, we're working on uh, the new CLI and revocation as well. And we're gonna continue working on the shared crypto library. And from a contributor diversity perspective, we now have community members in Finland, Holland, the UK, the US, Canada, and we've got, as I mentioned before, contributions coming out of um, the US as well as Canada for very specific functionality the community members need. And we're working more closely with the community and trying to bring them more into both the roadmap and the sprint process. And that is an ongoing goal for 2018, which is just to be more open as an indie community. And that is the fastest I've ever spoken on a conference call ever. And I apologize if I went too quickly. Are there any questions? Any questions for Sean? Nicely Hopefully. done, Sean. Oh, and uh, one thing Nathan and I uh, had a discussion earlier. If going forward on these quarterly updates, we're going to have one of the maintainers. Uh, we're going to make it a rotating group of maintainers so everyone gets the chance to present to the TSC and talk about all the good work we've been up to. So, Good. Excellent. Any questions, comments, concerns? It's in the wiki if you want to read it. Oh, also at the bottom of our uh, update, um, I do have a note about joining our mailing list and attending our working group calls, which happen every Thursday at 8 a.m. Pacific, 9 a.m. Mountain, 11 a.m. Eastern. So, you know, if you want to find out more about Indy, that was my cheap plug for my team. So, thanks, guys. All right, well, we've got 10 minutes left um, and I still haven't remembered what it was that I wanted to bring up. So while you think, I just want to highlight that uh, I took advantage of the Hackfest to work with Tracy on the, um, on the labs. And so you guys remember we had a big discussion, we agreed on the labs, we had a document, and basically when it came to making it operational, it didn't say anything else than oh, people will just submit a pull request. And so we tried to figure out what it really meant and we have now documented uh, the process. It is a pull request, I'm happy to say. So we're in line with what the plan was. And uh, Mick offered to be a guinea pig. I just saw that actually during this call, somebody else submitted the first proposal. And so while I don't necessarily want to have a flood of proposal right away, because we still need to, you know, make sure that it works. Uh, I do want to give a shout out to, so that people know that, you know, we are open for business. That's outstanding, Arno. And um, you should get mine this afternoon. Cool, thank you. All right, uh, call it a day then? Yeah, I think so. I, I was looking around. I know I wanted to bring something forward that was sort of real quick from a technical perspective. Uh, I'll just send it to the mailing list. I, I don't think it needs a full discussion. Was it the copyright stuff? Um, no. I don't think so, no. Okay. Um, but that's actually, um, 
a good point. It is a good point. We, we <laughs> could have screwed that up. But good, uh, good catch. Good catch, Dan. Um, so, so what, uh, yeah, so I was chatting a little bit with, with Mike on an email thread, and I'm, uh, I'm hoping, Mike Dolan, that is, and I'm hoping he can put something more authoritative out to the mail list. Um, yeah. My understanding, short of the conversation with him, is that a uh, copyright owner maintains the copyright on their original work. That's but when they I put thought. it into open source, as soon as people start modifying it, it's very unclear who's copyright. So there's, uh, I think it's a notices file where a project can put the original copyright contributor, uh, like a reference to them there, but I don't think it reads as a, a copyright statement directly. Uh, and then uh, the banner comes out of the file. Um, Mike had said uh, that it should be the, the contributor who removes their own copyright banner. Uh, but I th maybe for that level of detail, we can we can let him so, post to the list. And, and then he would be expecting that it all says Linux Foundation something, something, something. Yeah, when I looked at uh, the Apache ones, I, I don't recall. I think there was no copyright header. Everything just went to the, the Apache license. Hey, what, Dan, why don't I, I suggest that they come back the recommendation? Apache license doesn't cover copyright, so... Uh, Dan, from that thread, I think I think what's what is just needed is a clear, like a, a clarification of either existing policy, and we can send something back out to the TSC. Or if it's not, you know, if there's some still a policy question, then we can tee a proposal up for for this uh, group to consider. But uh, yeah. uh, I just there's a lot of context to it, so I don't want to uh, have too many people, uh, you know, feel like they don't have the context for the conversation. Right. Right. Let me prepare. I was something. just trying to stall for Chris again, but yeah, I, I I make something which is a little quicker, I think. Although, if it spins into a longer conversation, we can continue next week. Which is, um, and I think we talked about this when we set up the the incubation process and kind of the standards for 1.0. Um, but do we expect a project to graduate from the incubator before it's allowed? Oh, that was it. <laughs> That's what that I thought. Was it. It took me a while too to remember, and then I was like, I know there's something. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and so we probably won't be able to get that done in six minutes, but maybe we should introduce the uh, the thought. That was intro that that it could leave incubation until what? It, so so that it cannot make a one dot release before it leaves incubation, before it graduates from the incubator. Oh, is, that, is that a policy? Is that a desire, or is that a hard and fast rule? And remember that um, when a project goes to 1.0, uh, we spend real money to have a security audit and all that yeah, done yeah, as yeah. well. Yes, yes. Yeah. And, and so, it means something, right? Yeah. Right. So just to be clear, I don't, I don't believe that in anything, certainly nothing that I helped to author in terms of the bylaws or any of the guidelines and so forth that we set up as far as the TSC, did we actually say that there was a prerequisite to go to one to, to, to graduate from incubation to go to 1.0. Um, so I think it's then a question for the TSC to think through that if a project came forward and they're still in incubation, can they go to 1.0? Um, uh, and, you know, what are the implications for that, right? And so, you know, is it a judgment call of the TSC that they look at maybe some of the reasons why the team, uh, the project isn't, out of incubation and you know if there's a solid trend towards addressing it that that's okay or you know is it a hard requirement as brian said and you know if they can't answer all the you know the criteria for uh incubation graduation um you know do they stay in dot nine boy point nine point nine point you know uh until they can um it's a, it's a, I, I think it's 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 worth giving it some thought, and I don't know. We can have some initial five minutes worth of discussion here. Um, well, why, why don't we plant the seed? Why don't we? Um, I'll follow up with an email to the TSC so we can get even folks not on the call, and maybe tee it up as a topic for next week's agenda. Yeah. Because there's if lots I of may, between, Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. If I may interject, it seems a bit odd because we spent so much effort into, you know, highlighting this, tracing the fact that 
the life cycle status was independent of the status of the software that is being produced, it seems like going counter to this principle, but I can um, see from a communication point of view, if nothing else, why we would want to do that, but I'm a bit reluctant because of that. Yeah, I think I think we need to really d decide whether like one zero is a big thing or not. At the moment, it is right. So if it is a big thing and it's a milestone that you reach, and then after that we spend more money and do all stuff, all other things. I don't know, locking APIs or whatever it is. Then we need to kind of have some barrier to. Well, it's even it is a rest. big, it uh -huh. is a big thing because we do coordinated marketing and all that stuff too. Oh, 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 oh. And uh, yeah, so it's a marketing, it's the auditing. It, it, as long as it signifies a big thing and it's a milestone, then we need to decide, you know, when can you reach that milestone? I think if you want to nullify some of these requirements, then we can change it. But at the moment, it seems to me like it's the natural thing to, to, to get to maturity after, after you're out of incubation. If you, if we go to all the, you know, the extended lens of, of all the work that we are doing as part of the one zero, you may as well just apply to graduate out of incubation. That, that, that's my take in, in, 60 seconds, I guess. Yeah, my recollection of the history of the life cycle was that at least I didn't want to imply that a project that had a mature community meant that it had mature code. But I think uh, reversing that uh, to say that a uh, 1.0 project necessarily has a mature community is, is maybe appropriate. The, just looking at the data points that we already have, right? We have three projects and yeah. Yeah, it is consistent with what we currently have at least. The counter argument to this is if there's like s some small project, I mean, not a DLT project because you, there's, you know, that needs a community. But if there's some small feature project that like one guy codes up, spends a lot of time maintaining, lots of people start using, well, it never really has a community but if a lot of people are using it, you know, it might be, uh, it might be one best to 1.0. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. So I, I, I tend to sort of think that Dan, you know, is pretty much along aligned with the thinking that I had, I think, um, you know, it, it was clearly that the case that we didn't want to signal that just graduating from incubation was, and, and I think that sentiment shared, was shared by many on the TSC at the time, um, that simply graduating from incubation necessarily meant the code was mature, um, that the 1.0 was the sort of the signal for that. Um, <clears throat> and um, I don't know that it's necessarily the case that the code isn't mature if the team hasn't, you know, gotten to a certain level of diversity or whatever, you know, um, and, um, uh, but, but I, I do think that it's probably the right thing to do to sort of have us do a, a good hard think and come back next week and we can have further discussion and make a, make a call and, and update the, uh, the policy accordingly. So with that, um, we're a minute past. Thank you, everyone, and um, talk to you all next week. All right. Thanks, Chris. Yeah. Bye for now. Thanks. Bye, everyone. Bye, Bye.